Hi everybody and welcome back. You've already read the thumbnail, so let's get straight into it. Today we want to shield this guitar from electrical interference, and to do that we're going to line the cavity with copper foil tape. Now I'll be the first to admit that my method of doing this is a little bit more convoluted than others you may have seen around the internet. I just find that this gives me the most consistent results. If you're going to go to this much trouble, then you don't want to waste your time with inconsistent results. So the first thing we're doing is we're grabbing a simple piece of paper and a pencil. I'm stretching the paper quite tight and rubbing the pencil gently around the edges of the cavity. You want to use a nice soft pencil for this and as you rub it on the piece of paper you can see the lighter grey areas are where the cavity isn't and where the pencil goes dark that's the lip of the cavity. Once you finish tracing don't forget to label your little templates. Speaking of little I'm working on the tiny bench today so I have to be very careful when I'm flipping this over. Unlike a pickup cavity, this one's a little bit more challenging. We've essentially got a cavity in a cavity. So once again, I'm going to a piece of paper and just using my fingernail to score the edges and get an idea of what I'm working with. You can bypass this completely and do it directly on the tape if you like, but I think this gives cleaner results. As you can see from the pencil tracing, I'm not going for perfection here, but we're definitely close enough. All will be revealed soon. For now, I'm cutting out my shape. And there it is. Now let me show you why accuracy isn't super important on this one. Holding my shape down, I used the same method as before to trace the template. Once the shape is made, we can remove it and add it to our pickup templates. I'm using a ruler to offset that new line by 5mm all the way around. If you design your guitars in a computer machine, then you can select the area, give it a copy, and then offset the curves by, I'd say, 1mm in each direction. I'll show you how. If I draw a little line to close that curve, like so, Then I can save this out as a PDF or whatever format works. You can send it to your printer and then cut around that. I've gone with the analog method. This shape is actually going to give us two templates. The first one I'll cut around the outside and then I'll cut the inside shape as well. When you're buying adhesive copper foil tape, it's important to make sure that both sides are conductive. So that means that the adhesive has to be conductive also. As you can see, I'm cutting around my shapes and this particular one is a little bit too big for one width of tape. So what I do is Carefully peel across the top surface and cut a strip off the backing. Then I can flatten it out and attach it to the larger piece. I find it's a lot easier to do all of this kind of work outside of the cavity rather than inside where there's just no room. Instead of trying to cut around odd shaped and fiddly little pieces, I find it's a lot easier to line up the longest edge with the factory edge of the tape and then trace around them. It's a lot easier than trying to use a scalpel. Okay, all of my shapes are cut out. 
I decided against cutting out the inside of this one, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Starting in the deepest part of the control cavity, I'm pushing in the copper foil tape, but I'm not pushing it hard down onto the surface. I want a little bit of contact, just so that it'll stay where I put it, but I don't want to push it into place until it's perfectly positioned. Perfect positioning requires a little lip all the way around the edge. So until I'm happy with that, that's where I push it down. You can just use the soft part of your finger for this and then use your fingernail to push up against the wall of the cavity. You can see there we've got a really nice even transition. I pre-cut these strips to the depth of the cavity. The application method is exactly the same as before, except I'm lining up the tape with the top lip of the cavity. It's okay if you don't get it perfect because there's a little bit more to do and we'll do it now. I've made a couple of little tabs and they bridge between whichever screw holes you decide and the main body of the cavity. Once they're done, it's time to take care of the lip. Remember this? It's made from two pieces of tape, and so I remove the backing from the smaller piece. I'm gonna use it to try and align it, and with the backing on, it remains a bit more firm and a lot less sticky. Once I like the positioning, then I can press down on the top part and make that adhere. Then I can take off the bottom part of the backing. Because it's held in place already, it should be a breeze to put back down over the cavity. Now you may remember back when I was cutting this out that I elected against cutting the inside part out. And the reason is, is because it's a lot easier to position the tape while it's one piece and now I can take the scalpel and cut out the center part. It's a lot easier this way. All right, that looks great. So now it's time to flip the guitar over and do exactly the same thing on the pickup cavities. Unlike the control cavity, when you're doing pickup cavities, you want to make sure that all of your tape is below the surface. I did the control cavity cover as well. The reason is that it connects with the lip of the control cavity and that seals away your circuitry from the majority of electrical interference. All right, friends, I hope that helped. The next episode is gonna be the full build of this weird guitar. It's been keeping me company all throughout COVID and I'm delighted to see it just about finished. It should be a good episode. And as always, I hope to see you then.